All right, uh, folks, this nine, lesson 9.5 is actually a pretty lengthy lesson, but I'm going to keep it, again, like yesterday, very bare bones. Uh, we're going to do some multiplication, we're going to do some addition, subtraction, and then we're going to divide. And I'm going to make those into three videos, so, they make it, so that way if you need to watch a portion over or you need to check something out, uh, you don't have to watch the whole darn video. You can watch one of the individuals. So this one is going to be about addition, subtraction. It, I'm sorry, it's going to be about multiplication, but I'm also going to include the warm-up here. So if you want, uh, go ahead, if you haven't done the warm-up, pause the video, do the warm-up real quick, and then we can come back and check it. But I think it's important for you to go ahead and give this a shot without watching me do it. All right, hopefully you've tried the warm-up, you got it all done, and I'm hoping you read this right here. Assume all variables are positive. No absolute values necessary. For those of you who just despised lesson nine four, and you hated writing those absolute values, and you weren't quite sure when to write them, well, you need to figure that out, but understand that today, you're exempt. You just can assume that all the variables are positives, and you don't need to worry about those negatives, or those absolute values. All right, four times the square root of 54, we're hoping that you're able to figure out that that 54 is the same as the factors are nine times six, square root of nine is three, so four and three make 12, so you get 12 root six. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, number two here. 12x squared, y to the fifth. So now you don't have to worry about those absolute values. You can and just enjoy this, and you write it as 2xy squared times the square root of 3y. And again, I'm factoring out a 4 out of there, and then that x, the pair of x's are creating 1 that I can bring out, and then those 5 y's, I'm able to pair up two of those, so I get y squared, and I still have that single y on the, same, on the inside. Uh, the cube root of 128, again, you can factor that as, now this gets a little bit crazy, 64 times 2, and 64 happens to be a, a perfect cube, uh, 4 times 4 times 4, so we get 4 times the cube root of 2, and then finally, the cube root of 16, x to the 4th, y to the 6th, remember, since it's a cube root, I'm looking for groups of three in order for me on the inside in order for me to factor one out so I get again this is if you want to get really technical here eight times two and then I have that x to the fourth y to the sixth now the cube root of eight becomes a two and I can take out a set of three x's to make the single x out here and I can bring out two sets of those y's so I'm gonna get a y squared and then what's going to remain on the inside is that two, and then one of those x's is still in there. Remember, if I take out a group of three, that means a single x is still on the inside. So hopefully those were not too tricky since we've been doing a number of those last few days. Now into today's lesson. If you want to take a second and fill this out, the whole point, if I could just kind of cut to the point, is that if you take the square root of four times the square root of nine separately, so the square root of four is obviously two, the square root of nine is three, you get six. But you also have the option of multiplying those values on the inside and taking square root of 4 times square root of 9 and treating that like the square root of 36, which gives you the same exact product. So what is the proof here in the pudding? The fact of the matter is, if you have the square root of A times B, you can also think of that as two separate square roots, square root of A times the square root of B. Uh, the same would go here for the square root of 16 times square root of 25. That would be 4 times 5, or 20. And then you could multiply 16 and 25 together. You'd get 400, and the square root of 400 is also 20. So again, they're just giving you a couple of examples to say, hey, with these perfect squares, do you see that that's proof that this is indeed true? That the square root of AB, the product of these two values, could be written as the product of two separate radicals with each of those factors inside of its own radical symbol. It's not the end of the world. That's not too surprising. I'm assuming that most of you are probably pretty comfortable with that. Now, as far as examples of multiplication, I'm going to only do a select few of these to keep this video rather short. The first one I'd like to do is example number three. All right, example number three. Oops, I want to drag that over a little bit. There we go. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I have 2 times the square root of 2x cubed times 3 times the square root of 6x. Now, I'd like for you to think of these. If you want to try it and pause the video and then try it, that's fine. 
the numbers that are already outside the radical, those are going to stay outside the radical. So you better go ahead and write the 2 times 3. Those numbers, those, those coefficients to the radical, they're going to stay outside of there. And since this is multiplication, we have a whole lot of flexibility. Now, what do we get on the inside of that square root? Is going to be the 2. It's going to be there. I'm going to have how many x's? Well, I have these three and that one that's over there. So you get x to the fourth. Now, I want you to think about that 6. That 6 could be factored as 2 times 3. And the reason I'm asking you to think about that is if you factor that 6 as 2 times 3, you'll notice on the inside of the square root, we now have a pair of 2's. And so that allows us to factor out one of those 2's. So I'm going to end up with the 2 and the 3 that were already outside there. And why not go ahead? Let's go ahead and think of that as 6. And then that 2 that we're going to take out, as well as we pair up those x's, we're going to be able to take out a couple of those x's. And what's going to stay on the inside of that square root? We already took out those 2's. We took out all the x's, so the only have left is that 3. So what are we going to get when we multiply these together? 12x squared. All right, 12 times x squared times the square root of 3. So what's the moral of the story here? What can we take away from this? The, the, and the important thing to remember is numbers that are, and when we're multiplying, this is only true when we're multiplying, numbers that are already outside the radical, those can be multi multiplied together. Just simply like, co co yeah, like coefficients to variables. Um, but then what's inside the radical can then be multiplied and combined inside their own radical, and you can pull out those common factors. All right? Let's move on down to number seven. Go to the next slide. I apologize. Number seven. Now, I'm going to move this one over a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. All right. This is the cube root, so it's a little bit different game here because we're talking about cube roots. Now, there are no factors already outside the cube root, so I don't have anything I can multiply right out of the gates that's outside the radical, but I can multiply those values that are on the inside. So let's think about this. I'm going to write it as one big cube root, if that's all right with you all. Now, the 3 and the 18, if you think about the, uh, the 3 and the 18, 3 is already a prime factor, but 18 can be factored as 9 times 2. And you're like, why would I do that? Well, if you think about it, the 3 and the 9 make 27, and 27 is a perfect power of 3. It's a perfect cube. And now x squared and x to the fifth, I have a total of x to the seventh. So what can I take out of there? Well, the 3 and the 9, again, those make up three factors of 3, so I'm able to take out a 3. And then the x to the seventh, if I pair those, if I group those into groups of three, I would have enough to make two groups of three, so I can take out two x's, so x squared. Now what's going to stay inside, on the inside of that radical, is going to be the two. Remember, the three and the nine combined to be allow me to take out this three, but the two, it stays. And then the x to the seventh, again, reminder, I took out a group of three x's and another group of three x's, that's how I got these two but then I have one that still remained behind out of those seven. So seven divided by three gave me that, that one remainder. So that's all we're going to get. That's all we do is get down to that point right there. Turn the page in your notes and let's try number nine. And that'll be the last problem we're going to do for multiplication. Now this is a square root, so we're looking for pairs. So you ask yourself, on the inside of there, I'm going to rewrite this with that big square root, and I'm asking myself, Inside there, that I'm just looking at the numbers. Let's go to coefficients first, the 5 and the 10. I have a 5, and that 10 can be factored as 5 times 2. Now, why would I do that? Because now I have a pair of 5s, and I'll be able to take a 5 outside of that square root. Now, let's look at variables. How many variables do we have here as far as x's go? x cubed and x cubed make that x to the 6th. So, how many x's am I going to be able to take out of there as pairs? Three pairs of x's. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So notice I've already been able to take out both those five and all those x's. Now let's go and let's look at the y's. I have y to a power of one and y to the fourth. So I can combine those and I get y to the fifth. Now as far as pairs of y's go, how many are you going to have? I'm going to have two pairs and then that means that one, just one, is going to be stuck inside there. So I end up with the square root of 2y. 
Again, first thing I did was combine them all. Everything that's inside this, since they're both square roots, I can combine the two. And then I say, hey, okay, now looking at these factors that are in there, how can I pair them up and be able to pull them outside of that, rad that radical? And that's all multiplication is. Very, very flexible, allows you to do a whole lot of things because multiplication, again, not very strict, and allows us to multiply. Just remember, don't multiply numbers that are outside of radicals with numbers that are inside. So keep them with their own type. So like in this number example, 8, I'm not going to do it, but the 3a and the 4, those values that are outside the radical, those can be multiplied together, but you can only then combine them with values that are pulled out of the radical. All right, thank you very much and good luck.